All right, so uh, at this point, we have a, everyone should have their millimeter template on their computer. Uh, what we're going to be doing for the next six weeks or so is uh, shifting from our metric system to English, doing some architectural work. So we're going to create a, uh, what we'll call Archi template for architectural work. Uh, and we're going to do that just by modifying our millimeter template. So you can either open your millimeter template or you can just do new drawing and use your millimeter template as the template. And at this point, this is what your millimeter template should look like. We've got paper space uh, with just a viewport uh, inside this uh, inner rectangle here, last name, drawing, date, scale, and then your model space should be blank. And then on today's assignment, there's an attached PDF. Uh, as we get into more complex assignments through the year, uh, I'm going to start giving out PDFs as opposed to just writing a description either on the assignment or uh, in school loop. Uh, so this one has uh, screenshots of all of the windows that we're modifying. So uh, if there's something wrong in the future uh, with your template, you might want to go through that PDF, and it'll take you step by step on what to do to correct it. All right, so begin by opening our millimeter template. We're going to go to our units. Spell that correctly. Uh, we're changing our units to architectural. And our precision will be 1 64th of an inch. Uh, decimal degrees, uh, decimal will still uh, remain degrees. Our precision, though, we're going to change to 0 0.000. So that'll give us some more. Three zeros? That is three, uh, three zeros after the decimal point. Uh, insertion scale should be inches, lighting should be set to generic, and uh, everything else is, should be default settings. So we're done with that. Next we'll go to our dim style settings, so, so D and enter. We're going to be modifying the class style. And I'm just going to go from tab to tab, starting with lines. Uh, our baseline spacing should be five feet. Um, along with our extend beyond and offset from origin, all five feet. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, extend beyond dim lines. So in the position and length. Uh, so all set, make sure you put your apostrophe here to represent feet. And then moving over to symbols and arrows. We will also be changing our break size to five feet. On both, um, Not the arrow, size, yeah. uh, arrow size should also be five feet. And our linear, um, Linear jog dimension, the jog height factor should be three feet. So the only different measurement there. Okay, all that is good. Moving over to text. Text height, five feet. And offset from dim line should also be five feet.
and our alignment should be ISO standard. ISO. Good. Uh, <clears throat> all right, moving over to fit. Uh, everything should be our should be unmodified here. So just make sure yours looks like my window here. So all the kind of default template settings there. And then our primary units, we're going to change to architectural. Precision will match our units at 1 64th of an inch. Bound off should be set to 0. Uh, scale factor should be set to 1. And. Um, your angular should match what we put in our units. Uh, so decibel should be set to degrees. Um, and our precision is 0 0.000. Everything else looks good. And then alternate units, uh, we just want to make sure that this is unchecked. We aren't displaying any alternate units, but this is if you wanted to show both uh, you know, English and metric, you could set something up here and set this to metric and it would give metric dimensions as well as two inches. But again, this will remain unchecked. And tolerances, uh, should, our last time over, again, all set to the default settings of uh, none. That's really all I need to put here. And we are done with our dim style, so hit OK here. And we'll close this. Now we'll go over to our paper space. Uh, so I've gone to my paper space, which I've named 8.5 by 11 to represent that's the size paper that we're printing on. And we're going to go to our page setup, so the page setup manager. And we're going to modify my um, layout here, so I have my 8.5 by 11, which I'm going to edit. <coughs> and you want to select the class printer here. Uh, our size should say US letter, but I think yours said something different. Uh, this was. So we're in our paper space. So I fail that. Uh, and then just file page setup manager. And then you click on the little gear here and go to edit with your 8.5 by 11 selected. Yeah. There we go. So we've got our class printer selected here. You should have something that resembles letter. Uh, it, as long as it says either letter or 8.5 by 11, we should be all right. Uh, our orientation should be um, what they call landscape. This is the second option over. Uh, what to print is the entire layout here. And now we're going to change this uh, back to our inches. So our, our scale used to be one millimeter equals one inch or one unit. I'm now changing it to one inch equals one unit. So this is what this scale box should look like. Now this column on the right, if you don't see this column on the right, there's this little arrow here at the bottom that kind of open and closes this. And there shouldn't be any thing that you really need to modify here.
right. <clears throat> and then the last thing we'll need to do is scale our template again. So here we've got our big giant template here and our little page here. So I'm going to select everything. So Command A. And uh, I'm going to start by, uh, I like to kind of move it onto my page. So I'm going to hit M for move. I'm just going to drag a corner and kind of get it close to the corner here. And now we're going to scale this to be 10 inches wide. So I'm going to do a Command A again and scale. And the first thing it's asking us is to uh, select our base point. So we'll select the lower left-hand corner. Uh, so I did a Command A to select all. I then I typed in scale. And then we selected our lower left-hand corner. And whenever we want to resize an object to something specific, we hit R for reference. Enter. And what I want to do is I want to change the entire width of this to now be 10 inches. So I'm going to select the entire bottom. So starting with our base point, and I'll go all the way over to the right. Zoom in a little bit here. So I'm going from this point and then clicking again all the way to the right. And now as I move my mouse, I can see that it's scaling my uh, template here proportionally. Uh, but we have an exact measurement we want to do, which is 10 inches. I'll go 10, and then our little quotes for inches, and hit Enter. Now if I go Z, Enter, and A, Enter, it should zoom in to my page. I'm just going to dimension this because that looks a little short. 10 inches, OK. Um, and let's see, our height is supposed to be 8 inches. So let's just verify that. All right, so we'll modify that a little bit. So I'm just going to delete this outer box here. I'm going to put a new rectangle, and this should be 10 inches by 8 inches. There we go. <clears throat> and you want to verify that that is in your border layer. So the border, when we scaled our outer border was just a little bit too small, so I just deleted it and drew a new rectangle that is exactly 10 inches by 8 inches. Um, I push it, push it reason why I didn't turn it out like you, so it's all weird. All right. Got a moment. And then I'm just going to select everything with my move here, and I'm just going to get it close to the center of my piece of paper. And I deleted my viewport because uh, my viewport was also the wrong size. So I'm going to create a new viewport. So to make a viewport, it's just MV. And it's going to go from this top corner above our title block. So we don't want our viewport to overlap our title block here. Size uh, the viewport is uh, seven and five eighths. Say it again. Uh, 
Uh, so your viewport shouldn't be 10 by 8, it should be a little bit smaller. So it's actually... Oh, this rectangle? Uh, uh, you're going 10 inches. Your width is obviously 10, and then up 8. Well, your paper should be 8.5 by 11, so it should fit. All right, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, okay, so our last step is simply to uh, save this as a new template. Let's make sure there's nothing else we're going to do here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to File and Save As. And uh, under File Format, we're going to go to DWT. And by doing that, it should go to this fairly hidden location here that CAD chooses to uh, put templates in. So it's in your users, user folder, library, application support, Autodesk, local, Autodesk, the version R19. I think this means English, US. And then there's a template folder in there. Logical place to put it. And we're going to call this our Archi template. So it's A-R-C-H-I. I like to put an under, underscore. You can put a hyphen. And then template. And it will automatically put the DWT. So we'll save that. I have one from last year, but we'll just replace that. And then under English or metric, we're now back to our English system. So select English there. And then don't forget, and this is kind of weird in Mac, but it is asking us to enter a template description. Uh, you don't have to enter in anything, but you have to hit enter here. Otherwise, it will not save your template. So make sure you hit enter there. And uh, you can now close this file. And you'll know you've done everything correctly if you go to File and New Drawing. And you should now have your Archie template uh, as an option which will bring you to today's assignment. Um, and uh, just real quick here, today's assignment, uh, the only thing that's sort of unique about it, uh, you got to create a number of new layers. Uh, these layers need to say things like gas, and your gas layer is going to have a gas uh, line type to it. Um, so before we've done all of our solid lines were just continuous. Uh, we've had center lines that were dashed. Uh, a gas line actually says gas on it. So you can see here is a line type that says gas line. You click on that, which I had my border selected there, but you can see it actually writes gas on the, on the lines. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, and a couple things a little tricky on that one, but... Okay, I'm going to save this and then we'll go around and help people individually. Oh, this is where, yeah.